read all of them. What does God ask of us? We search for God's voice in our occupations. We look for a vocation in which we'll live out our call. When we find ourselves in trouble or in contentious situations, we pray to God for guidance. When we come to church, we listen to Holy Scripture so that we might hear what God has to say to us this week. Sometimes it seems clear to us that God is present, and sometimes God's presence seems invisible to us. And yet, through thick and thin, we wander in this life constantly on the lookout for God. This last week has brought a lot of change to our country and our world. We have seen executive orders issuing from President Trump's pen, new bills in Congress, uncountably massive rallies in Washington, D.C. and elsewhere in the country and world. We've been introduced to alternative facts, undignified behavior on both sides of the aisle, and the silencing of various voices. In the midst of this change, we wonder, as a Christian community, what does God ask of us? Our Micah text brings to light the Israelite predicament, which we find this morning to be our own predicament as well. The Israelite nation sometimes finds itself in and out of prosperous straits, possessive of another nation's land, spared the poverty of surrounding peoples, or even some peoples inside its borders. And in these times of privilege, the Israelite people waver from God's commands. They forget the hardship and oppression they felt at the hands of the Egyptians, or the hunger and destitution of 40 years wandering the desert, or yearning for a home when they were forced out of Jerusalem. They have forgotten their own hardships, and so they ignore the hardships of others. And yet, in the midst of this privilege, they continue to ask themselves, what does God ask of us? But here's the stickler. Here's the rub. The answers that they come up with to this question, these answers are directly informed by their privilege. It is easy to hear what they want to hear. It is easy to see their wealth, their land, their security as their own due, that which was given by God for their sole benefit. After all, they are God's chosen nation, are they not? And so they worship God with praise and thanksgiving, the offered burnt offerings. They bow their bodies before God in prayer. They sing songs of joyful entitlement and indulgence. They offer the fruit of their farming on the altar and rams of their fields. They offer calves not yet a year old. And even they offer their firstborns to the priesthood as sacrifices for their parents in that expression. But is this what God asks of them? This is not what God asks of God. This is not what God asks of Micah's countrymen. This is not what God asks of us today. God does not ask for meaningless sacrifices. God does not ask us to burn our wealth for a church that helps itself. God does not ask for meaningless prayers, for words that sound compassionate but lack action. Micah says, God loves those who do justice, that love with kindness, and walk humbly with God. Does God desire to slaughter thousands of rams when so many go hungry? Does God desire songs which thank God for excessive wealth when so many live in poverty? Does God desire worship from those secure in safety and health? Micah says no. God desires a people willing to release their wealth for the benefit of others, to sacrifice for the benefit of another, to use privilege to fight the safety, to fight for another of oppressed status, to voluntarily relinquish their safety, and join the ranks of our vulnerable sisters and brothers in insecurity. The Israelites, when they ask themselves, what does God ask for us? They found the answers they wanted. This is the problem with privilege. Privilege rarely reflects on itself honestly. Privilege rarely allies itself with the outcast and those of ill repute. Rarely does privilege allow itself to hear God in truth. 
we too find ourselves similarly possessive of privilege, like our Israelite sisters and brothers of old. We too seek God's purpose for our lives, and we too find answers all too easily which comfort us at the sacrifice of our neighbor. Micah reminds us this morning that we are called to think through that privilege, past that privilege, to seek out perspectives other than our own, to seek out those who are in pain and long for freedom. What does God ask of us? I speak to you this morning as a member of many privileged groups. I am white, young, male, employed, middle class, well-educated, from a stable family system, heterosexual, cisgender, married, born in the United States, and more. I speak to you this morning as a man who has answered these questions too, in ways that serve my comfortable status, in ways that do not ask me to consider the humanity of my neighbor. My answers do not push me to action, but instead I have sacrificed burnt offerings on an altar and prayed empty prayers. I have neglected my oppressed neighbor. I convince myself that I do enough, that I do what I can. This week, though, I hear sharply Micah's words, and these words convict me. God has told you, O oh mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? God has told you, O oh mortal, what is good. God has told you to do justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly. In the wake of this week's many changes, political and otherwise, I hear Micah's call to justice. I hear God's condemnation of privilege as an excuse to ignore my neighbor's plight. And our brother in God, Micah, too, calls us to reconsider this question. What does God ask of us? As we consider the predicament of refugees fleeing deadly violence, what does God ask of us? As we consider our earth and its many creatures, the wonderful diversity created by God for our stewardship and care, what does God ask of us? As we consider the oppression of people of color, the disproportionate rates of poverty, incarceration, and violence, what does God ask of us? As we consider gender inequality and women's rights, what does God ask of us? As we encounter hate and violence against our LGBT plus sisters and brothers, what does God ask of us? For us gathered here, I cannot hear God telling us to linger in our privilege. I cannot hear God encouraging hate against any one group. Instead, I hear from the mouth of Micah, one of God's chosen prophets, a call to move with urgency and compassion. I hear God calling me to move as one privileged, but not to preserve my privilege. I hear God calling me to use my privilege, bestowed, yes, by a broken world for the benefit of my neighbor. As we continue to worship, we continue to hear Micah's words this morning. We are reminded in the Holy Meal that Christ comes to us, not so that we might be comforted only, but so that we also might be strengthened. God is with us to strengthen us, when we encounter hate because we side with the hated, when we encounter violence because we step between hate and the vulnerable. Strength to count another person's perspective as worthy and true, though it be different than our own. We come to worship not to give God strength. Instead, we come to worship to receive strength from God. We do not come to worship to give God strength. We come to worship to receive strength from God. We go from this place thankful for all that we enjoy, both material and relational, and we must always be thankful. But we are called to more than thankfulness. We are called to serve out of that thankfulness. We are called not to guard our blessings with a tight fist, but rather to release this grip and embrace all peoples the world. Let us remember Micah's convicting words 
as we consider what to do with our lives. Let us remember justice, love, 